Welcome to Screening Room. I'm Robert Gardner. Uh, over the years, which is now, I think, three or four, uh, the Screening Room has been bringing you films of all kinds, mainly independent films, feature films, documentary films, animation films, avant-garde films. Today, I feel we're going to sort of leap into the future a little bit with uh, my guest, Michael Snow, uh, in the sense that he is at, uh, in that uh, term that uh, I pr suspect a little bit overused, uh, the cutting edge of film. He is a man who is uh, concerned with uh, extending the possibilities of film, exploring the conventions of film. And he's done it uh, several times over uh, with films that uh, some of you may know about, such as Region Centrale, uh, Wavelength, Back and Forth. We're going to be concerned with only one film today, Ramo's Nephew. Actually, it has a longer title. It's Ramo's Nephew by Diderot thanks to Dennis Young by Wilma Schoen. What we usually do at the beginning of a program is to try to get a, a little of the nature of the person across to the audience, that is to say where they are from, what they, I mean, where they're from geographically mm -hmm. and where they're from uh, uh, to a certain extent ideologically or conceptually. And uh, so, mm, why don't you tell me uh, again where you are from and uh, what uh, what it is that you're going to try to do in in this program in explaining uh, yourself in this film? Well, geographically, I'm <coughs> I'm Canadian. I'm from Toronto, and uh, partially Quebec. While my mother's from Quebec, I started to play uh, piano uh, when I was in high school, and then I went to the Ontario College of Art, which is in Toronto and started to paint um, and continued to play and uh, then I had my first introduction to film and since then these th these things have been continuing although not necessarily all happening mm -hmm. at the same time but I guess one thing has influenced the other although uh, I haven't done any painting for many years I do do uh, works with photography that in a way I've seen sculptures of yours I think reproduced in yeah some I haven't done an actual sculpture for for quite a few years either but uh, it may, may reappear I don't mm -hmm. know but in any <coughs> any case it's perfectly obvious you're a person who's been concerned with form um, visual form for a long time in various ways uh, and yeah. sound form which yeah. is actually going to be probably as much under discussion as visual form yeah that's um, uh, my films have had, um, there's a, a group of them, of them that have been, you can say, to generalize that they were concerned with camera movement. Mm -hmm. That's uh, back and forth and wavelength, uh, standard time and uh, La Région Centrale specifically. But another thing that I've been involved in also to usually generalize has been image sound relationships. And in each one of the films I've tried to work out some kind of <coughs> sound picture situation that's uh, a strong one for whatever mm -hmm. reason. Now, Ramo's <laughs> Nephew by Diderot, and uh, I won't go into the rest of the title because I think it, after saying it once, you can just refer to it as Ramo's Nephew, perhaps. Uh, uh, a man uh, in Los Angeles named Mitch Tuchman, is it Tuchman or I Tuchman? I don't know how to uh, pronounce it. Probably. Uh, says, uh, <laughs> the simple-minded lunacy of Snow's films conceal <laughs> single-minded good sense and have as their real subjects every conceivable philosophical notion about cinema. Well, I think that's a marvelous combination of words, which is really quite accurate uh, from the experience that I've had watching your films. I mean, mm -hmm. there is a certain lunacy in your films, <laughs> but there's a certain sense. From my side. <laughs> okay. But there's a lot of good sense and a lot of, mm -hmm. uh, of uh, good lunacy. Um, the fact that uh, he speaks of your being involved with every conceivable philosophical notion about cinema may say more about what he sees in your films than what you see in them. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, well, but uh, I do hope that we can uh, get to some of that. Uh, as, a, uh, as a filmmaker myself, uh, I would like the audience to know as I want to know what your working method is, that is to say, 
some people who would see this film, I think, who don't know very much about film, would say, well, that's easy. I can do that. Um, um, all he's doing is playing around. There's a kind of lunacy, uh, <laughs> uh, which may not be that structured. <clears throat> but it actually took you a fairly long time to make, I, I mm -hmm. imagine. When, when did you make Ramos, Matthew? Uh, it, took, like, it took about three years to make, 72, 73, and 74. Mm -hmm. And some of the ideas are things that I've been thinking about since 67, I guess, when I made Waveline. Mm -hmm. Well, now, uh, what we're going to do in, I will just explain um, very simply that uh, the film is over four hours long. Yeah, four and a half hours. Four and a half hours. Uh, not a simple uh, undertaking either for the filmmaker or for the viewer. And uh, all we have are about 40 minutes of sc mm -hmm. image screen time or image video time. And so we're going to take parts of it. Um, do you want to speak about how we arranged this? Uh, yeah, I'd like to um, try and make a bit of a description of the film because um, it's four and a half hours long and I don't think any individual section from it could indicate uh, in any way really what the whole thing is about because while it concentrates on being concerning itself with image sound relationships and that specifically to do with speech it's made up of some 23 separate segments, <clears throat> and uh, it's set up like a book in a way in that there's a kind of cover, title page, preface, index, and then the body of the film starts, which is all these sections, all of which are, are separated from each other by a set of kind of abstract color variations which are silent, and they themselves are another thematic part of the, of the, of the film. Now, each one of these individual sections is uh, an entity as far as the mode of uh, uh, filmmaking that's, you know, the, the image That's the subject are, of the episode. Yeah, yeah, and and the way it's done and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and in, the model really for the film was, uh, in some ways, a sentence, or the way, the way we string words together. And they, of course, can be rearranged in many different ways to make many different kinds of sense. In other so, words, you were concerned with the fact that we do string words together to make sentences, and therefore you felt that this was something to explore cinematically and uh, with yes, sound. Yes, it's, it's, I wanted to make a, a dialogue or speech film, uh, the basis of which wasn't uh, necessarily dramatic structure or anything like that, but an examination of, of recorded speech and what it is mm -hmm. and what you can do with it. Mm -hmm. So that, for example, a section which we're not going to show uh, right now is built all the shots are built from, from the scripted uh, f sentences, so that a shot might be a phrase length, a, sen uh, a sentence length, or a word length, or a syllable length. And uh, that's the way it's built. It only, it's mm -hmm. only built uh, from those units. Mm -hmm. and, uh, do you find mm -hmm. anything, do you feel anything that's paradoxical about a filmmaker setting out to do something on film which is primarily, or not exclusively certainly, but primarily about the the uh, element of sound or speech or, as you put it, kind of book or chapter uh, sentence. Uh, yeah, well, that's analogy. I don't know. You see, it has it has uh, its relationship um, to this thing called Rameau's nephew, mm -hmm. which is a short story or book by Rameau by uh, Diderot. Was that his novel or something? Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a dialogue between mm -hmm. two people, and it's a really fascinating thing. It's. Uh, Quite sure, you can read it in half an hour, actually. And it has certain kinds of relationships with this film. And if you've read the book, you might more or less see them. So mm -hmm. that's some kind of exterior connection. But anyway, we decided to, uh, or I, I guess, to start with, decided to show certain sections in, in a certain order. OK. And, uh, <coughs> well, we're going to, I guess, start that now. I'm getting some okay. prompting. Uh, I do want to just say that uh, in, uh, something that I've read uh, about you, that there's a quote that you've made, uh, speaking of this film, Ramo's Nephew, as something which you consider to be an attempt to make a genuine talking picture. Now, I think we can come back maybe mm -hmm. to that idea mm -hmm. after seeing the first cuts that we've selected from uh, Ramo's Nephew by Michael Snow. <laughs> <laughs> 